Hi, I'm Leticia and we're here at T-Base, a new community art space that's just opened in the basement of the Chinatown Center. We're here today to speak to Shelly about her practice and about ice cream. Hi Shelly. Hi. Shelly Zhang is a multidisciplinary artist based in Toronto, Canada. By both uniting past and present iconography with the techniques of mass communication, language and sign, Zhang's work deconstructs notions of tradition, gender, identity, the diaspora, and popular culture while calling attention to these subjects in the context and construction of a multicultural society. We're at T-Base, but you have a sort of longer relationship with this space than T-Base has existed. So when I first moved to Toronto in the early 2000s and didn't know anything, Chinatown Center and Chinatown in general is where you sort of gravitate towards to find your people, meet your folks kind of a thing. Chinatown Center in general uh, came about as a result of the mid 80s, where a lot of folks from the main Chinatown that used to be at Nathan Phillips Square got pushed out to the east and west sides of the city. And it used to be China Court, which was this beautiful pagoda-esque mall that was the first ever Chinese mall in downtown Toronto that got bulldozed over in the mid 80s. And now it's this large industrial mall space. Last year, myself and a few of uh, my collective members and angriers and feminist gang, we got invited by Art Metropole to do a project for the Toronto Art Book Fair, which happened in the basement here of Chinatown Center for the first time ever. And the folks behind the fair did a really great job consulting with the community and through inviting us, we got to learn about this particular space. During your project with Angry Asian Feminist Gang, what did you end up learning about this old ice cream shop. So the fact that there was a Vietnamese ice cream store open here as part of the Chinatown Center community is really fascinating, I think, because it paints a picture of how complex the diaspora is, how it's not a cut and dry, clear case of how folks came here. But also it's sort of like what communities are welcoming to other communities? Where can we find alliances with one another? Where can we find safe spaces with one another and places of support? And I think this is kind of an example of a business space that has perfectly exemplified that. And I think there's no coincidence that the vehicle that's bringing community together is ice cream. Yeah. Um, at least you would say that it's not a coincidence because ice cream really serves this really, this important role for you in the way that you form community and have conversations and analyze society. Yeah, I am i don't consider myself an artist that works with food, though I think it has come about as an unavoidable subject matter in our areas of my practice just because it's never just about food, it's about all these aspects of how food came to be. Particularly for the Chinese community, food was a large way of how our people and our histories were able to sustain ourselves economically. I've worked in food practices. Those are my first sort of jobs and gigs that I've been able to receive. But also the stigma and associations of Chinese food are very intrinsic in terms of our people and our community. So it's not something you can sort of shy away from. And ice cream is in pretty much all cultures around the world. Everybody ha has this form of an ice cream in some ways and it's all very unique, very specific to particular regions and it paints a beautiful picture of how that happens. Of the many times that we've been out together for ice cream, I've had so many breakthroughs in terms of understanding diaspora. I think specifically about the conversations we've had over Ruru Bait, who is a local small batch ice cream maker and she makes these flavors that I believe she calls Asian inspired, but for me, they really represent growing up in the Caribbean and really they're like memories of colonialism. Yeah. <laughs> and um, things, flavors like Milo and Horlicks and condensed milk, you know, the fact that those flavors can connect us. I think ice cream is a real fantastic vehicle because everybody has some point of access to it. And the fact that I see these really great small companies reclaiming these flavors and ingredients from whether memory or imagined memory and taking that back is really fantastic. And that's where I see this alignment with my practice is this ability to revisit history, to revisit these narratives, to collect them and to look for them. Within the diaspora, there's sort of this loss of memory that happens, whether it's through moving or shifting or what have you. So often I feel like these conversations happen over and over again, and there's so much of it that's oral history, and ice cream's kind of a perfect vehicle to pass that down. My entire practice is basically a picture of my journey of revisiting these themes and the fact that I can share that and see similarities with other people when we 
have these vulnerable conversations over ice cream is where I think it's really valuable. We talk a little bit about the, I don't know, haute cuisine ice cream that you may find at, you know, certain fine dining restaurants and how we feel about the way ice cream is being positioned in that context. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of ice cream getting a lot of frill now, which is totally fine because Instagram has changed food culture. But I remember this encounter when I first moved to America, when I first lived in Baltimore, and you could go up to the counter at McDonald's as a kid and just ask for a soft serve vanilla ice cream for free, and they would give you a tiny, tiny kid-sized one. And at the time, this was a major gesture to me in terms of like, someone just being kind to a kid, letting them have that moment, letting them be who they are. And this is really counter to say the elevation of ice cream that's not accessible to everybody, That's that you can't have over a meal. That's this performance of perhaps class more than it is about having a conversation. Okay, so Shelly, as the resident ice cream expert of Toronto. <laughs> maybe Official <the> title. <laughs> um, I have very important questions for you. One, what is your favorite flavor? I think one of my favorite ice creams is this ice cream bar that I used to get as a kid in Beijing. It's called Lao Bing, and basically it's a very pure, simple ice cream bar that tastes like all the best parts of a banana runt. Two, sugar cone, waffle cone, or cup. So my cones will say a lot about my mood. How much do I want to eat? How much, how rich do I want this? Will this go with the flavors? I would get a cup if it's a really hot day or if I want this to be quick. Third question. What would it say about someone who chose vanilla ice cream even though there were maybe a hundred different flavor options? Even if someone gets vanilla at an ice cream store, I think it can still say a lot about them. It says that, you know, maybe they like something more comfortable, maybe they like something familiar, or that they're very classic. Maybe they're a Taurus. Who is your dream ice cream date, living or dead? I would want to get ice cream with one of my ancestors who I've never had the ability to meet and see would we have been friends over this. <laughs> I've been working over the past few months with Alvin Long on a project called the Red Envelope Project where 11 East Asian diasporic artists have come together to create their interpretation of a red envelope. The envelope that I created is a sort of gold embossing, a very traditional take on a red envelope that says the only way to survive is to take care of each other the quote itself is from Grace Lee Boggs, who was this amazing Detroit activist that talked a lot about unity in the civil rights movement. And so I think it's a nice opener for the need to unify the, all the members of the diaspora to work together and to have conversations over ice cream about what that means to us. Thank you, Shelly, so much for meeting me here at T-Base and for talking to me about your practice and about diaspora and ice cream. I am really grateful for all the ways that ice cream has brought us together over the years and I'm so happy that we're able to share this with whoever happens to watch this video. <laughs>